Hey everyone, recently Murat Askan, a Cyprus ambassador, and you know, you can call him a friend, published a pretty detailed blog post comparing Cyprus component testing for React apps versus testing library and even MSW. It's a very detailed blog post with lots of lots of code examples, but Murat missed one little thing and I'm about to show you. There is a huge, huge difference between using Cypress component testing and just and React testing library. And I'm going to show you. So let's start probably with first example, header bar brand and Murat shows Cypress test. And I have it right here. So we're mounting that component that we import right from the source code. And then we're getting you know, some kind of link and we confirm its attributes. Then we're getting the component again and confirm that inside there is another um, DOM element with this particular thing. Then we come in another test, we confirm that that navigation link has a bunch of spans that we can click on navigation link and we go to the root folder. Okay, fine. How does it look when you run? Well, it looks like this, right? Mount the component. Um, uh, finds, for example, in the first test that link, checks its attributes, finds the component again, finds particular DOM element. When you confirm each individual span, you can see which one it actually found. Um, then it found the link, clicked on it, and then the path name became just a slash. If you compare this to the just and rec testing, library test, I mean, it looks pretty similar. You find something by test ID, you confirm the attributes, you confirm that there is React icon SVG. If you click on navigation link like this, right, you act on it, then the path name becomes just a forward slash. Now, the interesting thing here and the whole difference is the following. Imagine I'm running this particular test in Jest. So I'm going to copy relative path and I'll say yarn Jest. Watch this file for me and run it. Okay, so we're running it first time. Okay, it takes whatever it takes. Everything is fine. And imagine something changes. Uh, let's say in a component, this is what we are testing. Uh, let's say instead of off, we misspell it and we call it off. Okay, so just watch the file, reruns it. And what happens next? Well, it finds the error, right? It shows cannot find it by text. And it even prints into the terminal, the current node that it's trying to deal with this within a navigation link node. Okay. So you can kind of like try to inspect and then see, oh, you know, there is off. Now, if we move this to the side and just look at the Cypress test, okay? So what did we do? We saved it, it will run the test. Now, because off is inside or off, right? Then the test did not fail, okay? And you're like, well, we probably should be more precise and maybe even use a regular expression. Okay, let's say we say off, right? So we're trying to fail the other way. Okay, now notice it actually takes longer on a failing test because it checks maybe the component will update itself. Okay, so both Jest and Cypress retry, right? Uh, Cypress is much faster because it actually waits for um, application to do it. But the output in this case is the terminal versus the actual browser. So this is the component and this is where it failed. Okay, you can inspect the component right there. You get the actual DOM element. Okay, so you can see what's happening. Um, you can switch to the elements tab. You can grab uh, this component and you know call get attribute or whatever dumb element uh, methods you want so you have a full browse at your disposal when you debug things
This becomes more prominent and more visible when we move to the other examples that Murat is showing. Uh, the next one is input detail, detail component. Let me stop this, say input detail. So this is our component. Okay. And let's see, this is input detail testing library. Okay, so let's put it right here. And let's watch it. Input detail test. And this is the Cypress test, but looks, you know, similar, right? That's fine. You can look at the examples. Let's pull it right here. Input detail. Right now, everything uh, works. Uh, with a couple of commands. Now let's play with it. Imagine that accidentally someone goes into the input detail and instead of using read only prop passed to the component, some reason just marks it as true. Okay. So just runs. Okay. And fails. And it tells you oh, it was trying to clear it. Right. Clears only support on editable. So you need to look which element was that. What about Cypress? Well, Cypress also failed, right? And again, it retries clearing because it thinks maybe you'll remove it read only and it tells you read only. You can find the element, sit on the screen, you know, open the dev tools, click on the command, see where is read only, right? You can see the, which, you know, command actually failed and what were the elements before it. Again, you use browser versus the terminal and that makes a huge difference. So let's modify this back. So this will pass, but now I'll introduce something else. So you can pass on change in the just example, you create a function and you check that it was called as many times as the letters. Okay. In the Cypress test, we do the same thing. We create a stub function. And when we say get that stub by Alice, get its property call count, and it should be whatever the new value character length. Fine. But imagine someone goes in into the component and says, okay, I cannot just call it directly. Instead, I'm going to set timeout. So we're simulating some asynchronous processing. Okay, and we'll wait, let's say 100 milliseconds. Okay, very quick, maybe it's some data validation, maybe saving something in local storage, or making a call even. Okay, let me just ignore this particular error. Okay, so what does Cypress do? Well, no big deal. Okay, it actually retries getting the spy or stub, getting its call count, and even if we increase this to, let's say, you know, a thousand, right? It just waits and retries and let's make it really obvious. Okay. Notice how it retries and retries and then boom, it was called. So I don't have to change anything in my test, but built in retries in Cypress test where you just say, get this thing, this Alice, this dumb element, and it should pass this assertion will automatically go back and retry getting the stub or element and running the assertion again and again until it times out or passes. So what about our React testing library? Well, it's synchronous. You get the current call and that's it. You thought it should be two. It was zero. It never waits for a second and you have to add more, you know, kind of asynchronous assertions just to make sure you wait for something to happen. So this is a change. And I think Cypress makes elegant tests and this much, much simpler to write. My final example will be the network control. So somewhere there is intercept um, functionality, which is built into the Cypress, but it has to be some little bit different in uh, just in React testing library. Okay. So the one thing I need to open is the heroes. Okay, right here. So let's close it. Uh, so this is heroes test. Okay, let's see if it's passing. So in this example, if we look at the Cypress test, there are a couple of tests and I'm interested in the one that tries to delete 
Okay, should handle delete. Okay, so let's switch to Cypress Heroes. Okay, so what does it do? Well, if we hover, we can see that we uh, found the delete button. Okay, found the first one, clicked on it. It shows a model pop-up, yes, no. We said no, clicked, and we goes back. And then if we actually clicked button yes, right, then we can see the delete, which is on 500, right, which is with spy on, right? This test, oh, I'm looking at the wrong test. I'm sorry, heroes and heroes Cypress. Okay, I was like, why is this test wrong? Okay. So right here, we intercept and we return 500 when we delete something. So we just intercept all delete calls, easy, okay? And if we look at the heroes, everything is working. Now imagine we go to our component and accidentally, right, when we click yes, instead of actually calling delete hero, we do nothing. So both frameworks we run. Okay, now in our test right here, we don't spy on the intercept. We don't wait for it to confirm that it happened. Instead, we just observe that the error is not displayed. And remember, it just prints the current component in its parent to the terminal. Like, try to understand the problem from this. It's impossible. All you see is a dump of a part of your page and something that doesn't appear, right? There is no error. Why it's not there? You have no idea. Now, let's look at Cypress again. Let's rerun this test and you can see what it's doing. So you can see that it clicked and clicked and, and, and then we're waiting for delete hero, right? This is the root, right? Too. We're observing and spying on the delete calls and we're stopping them, that's fine. But notice when we clicked yes, we were waiting on it here and it never happened, right? Like right here, it says timeout, it was never done. So we know what the problem was. We clicked on the yes deleted, but the application never made the network call. We don't see it right here. It never matched it. We don't see any uh, calls like that. So we know that some of the application is not making the network call as expected. So compare this to right to just this kind of dump of a current dumb page so this is what i think murat um, should have noted in his comparison it's not just the syntax and he does you know good example of comparing you know the left side would be just an react testing library right side here would be cypress equivalent like that's all good but in order for you to understand why for example i'm a big believer in component testing using a real browser, using a time traveling debugger, is that you have to actually try experience it and see how fast you can understand where the problem was and how to fix it when you work with React code or any frameworks component testing code. Okay, talk to you later.